Today, a recipe so good, your guests will shawarma all over it. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron, and today we're doing something cool and special. I know I've showed you a bunch of videos on the Trompo King before, but today I have like the king of all spit roast videos. We're doing chicken shawarma. Oh, a super Middle Eastern crazy good delight that's gonna be beautiful. Now normally it's cooked on a spit. That's where this comes in. I'm gonna show you how to do it in your own backyard so that it comes out just like as good as or better than any restaurant out there. You may be asking yourself, why do I need a trompo king? What good is that thing gonna do? It's just kind of a gimmick, right? No, it is not a gimmick. What you're doing here is you're taking meats that are traditionally cooked on an upright spit, like gyro meat, shawarma, things like that that you'll see that get shaved off. And what happens is that it, by using the Trompo King, it's cooking it upright and using it in the egg gives it sort of a, a convection type of effect. So it's cooking it from the outside in, just like it would in a regular restaurant. The good thing about the Trompo King is that whatever grill you have, it's gonna work for, okay? It comes with a tall spike. It also comes with a shorter spike in case your grill does not accommodate such a tall spike like this. You can put the smaller one in here, or there's also a smaller Trompo King available. If you're not familiar with what shawarma is, let me enlighten you, okay? It's basically chicken. You can use beef, pork, they use a lot of different stuff, but traditionally it's made with chicken. And I use chicken thighs. I think they have a lot more flavor. You know what? I never even used to eat chicken thighs, but my girlfriend got me started on them. Now it's my favorite part of the bird, go figure. But what it is, is it take, take the chicken and it's marinated for at least three hours, better yet overnight, in a series of, of herbs and seasonings that all come together. Now I've taken my favorites over the years and kind of combined them in to make what I took consider to be the best shawarma out there. So if you want the best shawarma out there, make this recipe. If you don't want the best shawarma, Make a different one, who cares? Now, again, you can use any kind of chicken that you want for this, okay? Some people like to use breasts. I, again, like I just said, I like to use the thighs. I think that they're a lot more flavorful, a lot more tender, even a little bit more juicier, and they're a lot less prone to dry out. So, we're gonna start with some beautiful chicken thighs. I got about two pounds worth of chicken here. So we're gonna do this, but I don't wanna leave them whole like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim a little bit of this extra fat off of here, okay? I'm gonna slice them this way so that we have nice, thin, flat layers, so that when we stack it, it all stacks as a big, giant meat stack on the Trompo King. Now, our next step of our process, we're gonna take our handy dandy bowl here, put all of our chicken into the bowl, all right? And we're gonna use a lot of different spices. This is a Mediterranean meal, so we're gonna use a lot of Mediterranean spices. The good news is, I mean, making this whole entire meal for less than $25. So don't worry about all the spices if you don't have each and every one, you probably have quite a few already, but don't worry about it because you can always add them. And like I said, it's not real expensive to do. So let's start adding our spices. Three quarters of a tablespoon of all of the following. Three quarters of a tablespoon of cumin, turmeric, coriander, garlic powder, sweet Spanish paprika. Then also we're gonna add in one half teaspoon of ground cloves, and a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Add a little more if you like it spicy. And all we do now is mix it up. Give it a good mix, coat everything real good. Well, now we're gonna add some liquids to this, some oil, but we wanna get the chicken coated really well in these seasonings. Let it sit for a couple minutes, then we'll put the oil and whatnot on here. Now, a lot of recipes don't call for it, but I like to add about a half an onion sliced really thin. This is just an onion I had to use. I used it from something else. Just going into marinade. Okay, so just slice it really thin. Now this has been sitting about five minutes here, so we're just gonna add our onions in now, just sprinkle it over the top. Okay, and next up, juice of one lemon. The last thing we're gonna add is about a third of a cup of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Folks, use a really good olive oil, okay? If you couldn't drink it, don't cook with it, all right? If you want to use good products, you wanna have a good flavor at the end, use good products, okay? I, I like this from Flora. So about a third of a cup, which is not a lot, okay? And that, is everything for our shawarma marinade. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator for a minimum of three hours. If you can do it overnight, that's even better. So you know the rule for this, to the refrigerator. All right, here we are, day two. So we've got our shawarma all marinated. You can see I switched it over to a bag. It's just a little bit easier. You can just rotate it around. This was in my refrigerator overnight. I just kept doing this a couple times to make sure everything is coated real well. So before we get started smoothing our meat stack, Let's get the grill lit, because we're gonna cook this at 450 degrees today. 450, yeah. So, let's get the grill lit, put some charcoal in here, and get the shawarma going. To get our fire started, we're gonna put some starters in our blazer ball. As you can see, the blazer ball was down in the bottom. They're not one-use wonders, you know. You could use them over and over and over and over again. I've had this one in here for about a year now, and I like this thing quite a bit. So, simply place two starters in there, put the top on the cage, as such and just close it, seal it shut. 
Now, like I said, we're gonna cook this at about 450 degrees. So we're gonna use our black bag premium charcoal. You can see I already had some in there from the last time that I cooked. I'm just gonna add a little bit more on top of that just to make sure that we have enough. So we'll fill her up here. One more bag, gone by the wayside. We are ready, but before we stack our meat, let's talk about the setup we're gonna use in the big green egg here, okay? We're not using the expander basket with the uh, Trompo King, because what happens is that when you put the expander basket in there, it's too high, so we don't want that. So we're gonna use strictly our convector. So we put our convector in here, so we're going indirect, okay? And just our regular grate. So it's gonna sit a little bit lower than it would if you had the expander in here, which is good, that's what you want. This way, you can put the Trompo King on here, and look at that, it closes perfectly. All righty, kids, it's time to stack our meat. So that's right, meat stacking time. So we just take it out of our trusty plastic bag. I got a real eye for the obvious, don't I? And this is really, really, really simple. All you do is just take each piece and set it down over the spike, just like that, and continue to stack it until the whole bag is gone. Now, what you want to do is offset, okay? Don't make them all go in the same direction. Offset them so that they're kind of like this, so that they're going in all different directions so you have good coverage and it can cook evenly. It's almost going to cook Almost like a roast is really what it's gonna do, okay? So you have big pieces, little pieces, all of them. They all go on here. And what I like to do, I like to top it off with a piece of red onion, about a half onion, put that right on top like that. And once you're done, that is what you have. Now it may not be beautiful right now, I understand that, but boy, is it gonna look good when it's all cooked. Yeah, it is. As you can see, the amount of meat we used, almost two pounds of meat here, is not quite, it's just about halfway up the stack. So you could make a lot more than this. You can double this recipe if you have a lot of people coming over. It's gonna make a lot of meat. This is already gonna create a decent amount of meat here for us. But you want more? You've got the room on here to do it. Or we could have used a smaller spike. So it's up to you. Hey, I got a nice friend. You should meet her. <laughs> meet her. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna, <laughs> this is gonna get cooked. It works the same way that a roast does, okay? We wanna always monitor the internal temperatures of chicken, 165. So. We're gonna monitor it by putting our meter thermometer right in the center, okay? And our grill is at 450 degrees. That's right, 450 degrees. I'm just gonna stick this on here, okay? A little bit towards the back, close her down. Voila! The way they serve this in Mediterranean, <laughs> I get it because it's Mediterranean, is in a pita. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that chicken in the pita, but we need something else to fill it. So we're gonna make a nice dressing and we're gonna make a great salad for it. We're gonna start with a half a cup of beautiful Greek yogurt. We're gonna add the juice of one half of a lemon. One tablespoon of good extra virgin olive oil. And just a couple shakes of some crushed red pepper flakes. And we just give this a mix. You can use a spoon, you can use a whisk. I actually, I actually prefer to use a whisk for this. Okay, once it's all combined like this, make sure it's all combined completely. And it doesn't have to sit for long, but we're gonna set it in the refrigerator while this finishes cooking. So, you know the drill. To the refrigerator! The salad we're gonna make is kind of a super traditional Mediterranean salad. It's really simple, it's just a few ingredients. Tomatoes, it says Roma tomatoes, but I like to use these little tiny San Marzano, tons of flavor. I'm gonna chop a bunch of parsley. Got an English cucumber, okay? Nice and dry, not a ton of seeds, not a lot of liquid inside. Real important, English cucumber or hothouse is the way you wanna go. And that's basically what we're getting done to put in here and combining up. We're gonna add a little lemon juice. So we are gonna make a little lemon vinaigrette for this, but the first thing you wanna do is give this a good pinch of kosher salt, all right? Mix it all around. You want this salt, you wanna let it sit like this for a couple minutes, let that salt draw out the moisture. It gives us a good base for our dressing. So just do that and kind of mix it around a little bit. Good, now we got that all mixed up. This has been sitting for about five minutes or so and some of the water did draw out of it. What we're gonna do now is make our simple dressing. We're gonna pour it right on top. We're gonna start with two tablespoons, again, of good EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons. Okay, just like that. One whole lemon, juiced. Again, we're gonna use the old hand trick to not get pits into here. These lemons are filled with pits. We're gonna add about a quarter of a red onion, nice and chopped. I just got yelled at for chopping this and not doing it on film, so I hope you enjoy it and appreciate it. And last but certainly not least, ground black pepper. About a, I don't know, about a half a teaspoon or so. Add all ingredients, mix to combine. Now we're getting close, but I wanna show you something too, okay? I'm doing this thing, I'm cooking it all the way through at one time. But if you wanted to, as this is cooking, you could take your knife and trim these outside areas. This is done, okay? All of this outside here is done. So you could trim it down, kind of like when they're doing gyros when they're cutting that, and that's gonna continue to cook. You'll actually develop a new crust on the stuff that's on the inside. So 
If you want to do it like that, trim it as you're cooking it. As it starts to caramelize, as it starts to get color, trim it, let that get color. You can keep trimming it like that the whole entire time. It works well that way as well. Good news, folks. Our meter says that we are done cooking. We have reached a 163. I wouldn't go to 165, I went to 163, okay? I cheated a little bit. But it's cooked all the way through, all the way from the top to the bottom. So here we go, the magic moment. Burp. Oh yeah, look at that. Is that gorgeous or what? The onion on top, I don't think fared so well, but other than that, oh man, that is gorgeous. Look at the color on that. Time to cut her open. Look at that, is that beautiful? Cooked all the way through, nice color all around, absolutely gorgeous. Man, that's gonna be good. It smells. Guys, I wish that you could smell this. I wish you couldn't hear the landscapers going. <laughs> no matter when we film, those landscapers seem to show up. So sorry about that, but look at that. Cooked all the way through, gorgeous, loaded with flavor, loaded with seasoning. Let's build us a pita. Now, once you've got your pita open, this is how I like to do it. Do it whatever order you like. I like to take some of our beautiful sauce here. Just kind of pour it all over the inside. Okay, all over the sides. You can smear it around a little bit. And now, some meat. Load it in there, spread it around, get some of the nice outside cooked stuff in there, put a topping off with some of the salad. Okay. What I like to do is I like to do that, then add just a touch more couple pieces of meat on top. And there you have it, folks, chicken shawarma in a pita. Now, you know how many other breads you can make this in? Non. <laughs> non, because that's the other bread. You can use naan, use a tortilla, do whatever you want, okay? But I like to use pita breads like this or naans, I find they're the best. But with a little mixture of that salad, that beautiful chicken cooked, absolutely gorgeous. There's only one thing left to do. You know what time it is, folks. Wow, I know I say it all the time, guys. And I'm honestly, when something's not right, I'll tell you when it's not right. If you make this for your friends and family, they are gonna be shawarmaing all over you. <laughs> shawarmaing all over I gotta stop. Anyway, shawarma, it can't be beat. This is just awesome. I mean, the outside, I think next time I will trim it down as I'm cooking a little more to let more of it get that crusty caramelization that build up that umami flavor. It's so good. But the mixture with the salad, with the, with the creamy uh, dressing that we made for it, it's absolutely fantastic. The nice part is, is that there's not one part of it that overshadows the other, okay? They're all mixed in together and it all just makes for an absolutely delicious bite. So. Make yourself the dressing, make yourself the salad. You know, you can eat it just like that too. It's a cucumber salad, it's delicious. So folks, if you saw anything that you liked that we used in this video or anything like that, okay, there are links below down in the description. The best news is there is a full recipe for this whole thing down below. The Trompo King, there's a link. Also, while I got you here, remember to subscribe to our channel. This way you don't miss a thing. Come back and see us again on our next video and our next one and our next one and our next one. This was our chicken shawarma on the Trompo King. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it because I'm going to go eat this right now. So I'm going to let you go. So I'm going to say remember to get out and grill and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.